I'm the kind of kid you couldn't take nowhere. Hey loves, it's A back on your screen with another one. Hope you're well. In this one, we're doing a story time compilation of all the times that I wasn't so well. This is all about how I injured myself, the times I bust myself open, doing things I had no business doing. Let's go through. Let's start from the top, literally, because that's the easiest thing to remember. I was in third grade. Don't know if you can see this here, but if you ever watch the vlogs, hopefully the fringe in the front covers it, but your girl's got a Harry Potter scar. This is from when I thought I could give someone who was double my size, same age as me, I was always the tiniest kid in school, a piggyback ride. Why did I do that? I piggybacked off of her first. Everything was fine. Then when it's my turn, your girl's trembling. I need to know, back in the 90s, whose idea was it to put pebbles in the playground? We didn't have asphalt, astroturf, that squishy fake grass, pebbles in the playground. So when I'm trying to hold up this girl twice my size, she somersaults over my head. I look down at her. She looks at me in a state of shock, looks at her elbow. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, she's hurt. I'm going to get in trouble. Da -da -da. Then she looks at me in shock again and I say, what happened? My best friend saw everything go down. She ran to my side, applied pressure on my head. I don't know what third grader knew that this needed to be done, but she's a wise one. She takes me off the playground towards the school to the principal's office. The entire time we're walking, you know what it's like when you've been in an accident, state of shock. I didn't feel anything, but because I start to see TMI, trigger warning, some of these stories are graphic AF, I start to see thick, dark burgundy blood oozing down my forehead falling off of my eyebrows i start losing it after all i'm kid third grade's like seven or eight right so i'm being led by my best friend who's holding my head i can't feel anything every kid we pass is looking at us like <gasps> which makes things worse we get to the principal's office even the grown-ups are tripping they call my mom who in the cab ride there cusses me off. You could have got the other girl hurt. Typical Caribbean parent. You could be on your deathbed and they're gonna cuss you off on the way out. That's just how it goes. I remember being in the principal's office. They call my mom. They send Jolene to go wash her hands because it's not really sanitary to have someone else's blood on your hands, right? They put gauze on my head. They're trying their best to stop the bleeding. Now I'm freaking out. I'm crying, 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 crying. I was already a crybaby. I have so many stories for you guys about being a kid and being a crybaby. Save it for another day. <laughs> I'm bawling. My mom comes. She freaks out. Like I said in the cab, she cussed me out. We get to the doctor's office. They pull out not one, but two pebbles out of this head. I know I got a five head, but I didn't know I had storage space too. They stitch it up, seven or eight stitches. I can't remember. And someone let me know down below because I don't know if back then they had dissolvable stitches. If they did, they didn't give me that. They gave me these thick black stitches that had to be removed. I don't even know if it was like two or three weeks later. It was so painful having them literally sew that into my head. They gave me Advil, couldn't sleep the first night. Oh my gosh. And for however long I went to school with stitches in my head. I was already self-conscious about the five head. Stitches in my head. I was hoping when the stitches came out that I wouldn't have the indent, but it's always been there. My hairline's always been back, so. If I don't have a fringe on the front, you can see that clearly, but that's how I got that. From the top to the tooth, one of these ain't mine. Can you guess which one? Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> so the story with this one is fourth or fifth grade at a different elementary school because we had to move. Hmm. This is a typical tale of kids doing things they have no business doing. Instead of staying in the babysitter's house and playing with the toys and the games she gave us, the kids decided it would be a better idea to go and play with the barricades. You know when there's parts of the city that will be closed off with those barricades that can open or close so cars can come through? Why did we decide instead of going to the swings in the playground, we were gonna swing on the barricade? So again, it comes down to size. There's a kid sitting on one side, I'm sitting on the same barricade, but on the other side, Newton's Law. When we swing this way and I go, I come back, boom. Unlike when my head busts open, this one I felt immediately. It was like reverberation. There was little wood stalks floating above my head. I looked down on the floor. 
why is my tooth on the floor instantly? Brrr. I was already super self-conscious about my smile. It wasn't like this. Back then, it was World War III up in here. My teeth were fighting. They were coming all types of directions. It was Cirque du Soleil all day. So now I have a Sailor Moon Crescent looking tooth in my mouth. Again, my mom gets called, cuss me off raw. We go emergency appointment. Nothing in Canada is free, by the way. So we had to pay a pretty penny for my tooth to look pretty again. And they didn't even do it properly because not even 10 years later, I'm eating cinnamon toast crunch or an apple. I don't remember. Whatever it was, it wasn't even that hard. I crunch and that crunch was different. I look down, I say, say it ain't so. I look in the mirror. Sailor Moon Crescent again. I made an emergency appointment that day. I think I'd work the next day, so I couldn't wait because I'm not going to go work <laughs> in the mall with a tooth missing. A lot of money to get that fixed, but I think they did a good job. I've only had to get it somewhat fixed at the newest dentist I went to because the back kind of had a ledge to it, which you can imagine is a lot more to clean and maintain and whatever. So they smooth that out. Let's hope this lasts me a long time or at least doesn't pop off at an inconvenient time. But if I know anything about life, <laughs> as long as it's not my wedding night. <laughs> I thought about getting veneers, but when I looked into it, it's $900 a tooth. And I'm not the type to go halfway with something, so I'd want to get all of it done. And right now, YouTube ain't paying like that. So my teeth are all right, right? If I didn't tell you, you wouldn't have known, right? Let me know. Next story is about this finger. So you see how this one closes like this? This one can't do that anymore. <laughs> this one is so stupid and unnecessary. If you're new to my channel, you probably don't know that I hate cooking. Even though I cook three or four times a week, it's out of necessity. It's, I live alone. I don't like eating out too much. Like I love the restaurant life, but to do takeout seems like a waste of money for me. Back in the day, when I was paying off my tuition and my OSAP and spending a lot, I didn't like to buy takeout as much either. But what I did like to do were those super simple, one-step, super lazy meals. I would buy the frozen pasta that comes with the frozen pasta sauce packet. I was too lazy to buy a can of pasta and pasta and boil it. So I'd buy the whole thing frozen, you put in the skillet, you heat it up, the sauce gets thick, it's perfection. It didn't taste that bad, but like when you think of it, that's next level lazy. So one day, instead of letting the pasta sauce defrost or running under hot water, we don't have time for that. I decided to try to cut open the packet of pasta sauce with a thick knife, but that sliced, that slice, trigger warning again. When I tell you my heart was beating and with every beat, no one was home. I was tripping out. I said, oh my gosh, I'm going to die here by myself because I cut my finger and it's a major artery. Luckily, I'm still here. But the way the blood was coming out, it was really trippy. I got it to stop. I probably should have gone to the hospital since even up to today, five, six, seven years later, it's still not able to bend the whole way. Even up until... A couple years ago, I remember my boyfriend at the time was backing into me. I don't even know how, but it kind of knocked the wrong way. And I was like, ow. And he's like, I didn't even touch you. Why are you tripping? He, I, he didn't know that I had this injury, but it's that sensitive. Like if I grasp something too hard or it's cold, it really hurts this finger. And even when I do the exercises the master taught me to do, it swells up. So I don't think this finger is going to ever be okay. Even the physiotherapist is saying, I don't know what we can do. Moral of this story is when it comes to a simple dish, don't chintz on it. All the times I injured myself could have been easily avoided, including this one. Not sure if you can see this. Luckily, it's faded quite a bit. But this used to be a very dark black spot from the time that I decided to climb the stove while I was still hot. You see, when I was a kid, I thought I was a little mad scientist. I was always doing science projects in the kitchen and getting cussed off for it. If it wasn't baking soda and vinegar, it was the alumin. I can never pronounce that word, but it's basically like a type of salt that you put in water and it crystallizes. Or my favorite thing to do, because you could eat it too, even though I had an easy big oven, so I could have done something way more safer, was melt sugar to the point that it caramelized and I'd have caramel to put on my treats. Usually when I caramelize sugar, the only thing that broke would be glassware. Alicia! I would always hear my mom cuss me off because she could hear it break. Why did I think it was okay to pour hot caramel into a glass cup? 
or mug. It would break every time, but I would still do it. So one of the times I was making the caramel, I set it aside, I turned off the stove, but I wanted to grab a treat in the cupboard above the stove. Why did I forget that just five minutes ago was on level high? So I reach up and I still do this to this day. It's a habit I need to change. I need to buy a step stool, but I hoist myself up if I ever need to get something top shelf. So I did that on the hot stove and burnt myself. And because I was climbing, it wasn't like I could pop off. So it's almost as if I pushed myself into the burner more. When I got off, it bubbled immediately. The bubble was literally this big. I left it alone for a week. But after a while, the fluid was moving in and it was getting to be too much to try to be careful when you pull on your clothes or go to take a shower. I popped that ish. I know, so bad. Ever since then, there's a scar and my parents swore up and down that if I let the bubble go down on its own, my hand wouldn't have scarred the way it did. I learned my lesson though, because unless the stove has been off off for an hour, I don't climb up there to get anything. I also don't store anything I need while cooking up there, just in case because I should have learned from that lesson. Any injuries I've had with my knees or whatever, I haven't inflicted on myself. I remember a kid tripped me on the playground intentionally. Knee was bleeding so badly. Kids are vicious, eh? This last story is all me. I went hiking. I wasn't wearing Tim's. I think it'd be okay if I went in Tim's. I was wearing Steve Madden boots. I don't know what I was trying to do. Went on this hike, it was a beautiful hike, it was by my old house, it was two hours, fall, good vibe, good exercise, whatever. Come home and I said, something doesn't feel right. Why is it I wake up the next day to go to work? I'm an 80 year old woman limping through my hallway. I don't remember if I called in sick, I know I went to work one day that week and everyone's like, what happened to you? I look like I've been through a battle. It was to the point where my left foot was doing all the work and my right foot was just dragging along like a sad cat. It was really bad, really, really bad. I should have gone to a doctor for that. Fast forward a year ago, I was at that job I just left. Out of nowhere I'm walking and the same thing happened. I was vlogging for you guys. If you go back in the archive, you'll see I'm there quasi-motoing it from one side of the office to the other. That lasted for two days. I took an Advil. I felt better, but I said, you know what? I'm not going to let this sit. I contacted my family physician. She couldn't figure out what it was. Referred me to a physiotherapist. We worked on it for a bit. I feel okay. Sometimes my foot seizes up. Like, you know, when you get pins and needles and it tenses up. But also, anytime I do yoga, if the audio is on, you can hear. Snack, crackle, pop. Luckily for me, most of my injuries are cosmetic. I haven't really needed surgery. I haven't had to go under the knife to fix anything. Knock on wood, it stays that way and I stay okay. I'm very grateful that I'm mobile, that I'm capable, that almost everything I've been through has been fixable. With the exception of my eye disease, I've been pretty blessed. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and my foolish ways. If you have any stories to share, you know where to leave it. Hit the like button if you want more story times. And until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.